Welcome to Wake Up With God. We live stream daily Mass today. We attend the Holy Mass on Sunday 19th, May 2024. Pentecost, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Please keep quiet and concentrate on attending the Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, we gather together celebrating the great feast of Pentecost. As I was reminded earlier this morning, the birthday of the church. So happy birthday, everybody. We rejoice in the way in which God has poured forth his Holy Spirit upon us for the building up of the body of Christ, that is the church. And so let us first pause and acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these most sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O 
God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every people and nation. Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth. And with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We now invite children ages 5 to 10 for their own special Liturgy of the Word downstairs in the Liturgy of the Word room. Children go to hear God's Word. Children go to hear good news. Children go with joy to hear God's Word. Children go to hear good news. Children go to hear God's Word. Children go to hear good news. Children go with joy to hear God's word. Children go to hear good news. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound they gathered in a large crowd but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded and in amazement, they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, you are great indeed. How manifold are your works, O oh Lord. The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. If you take away the they perish and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. 
May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord be glad in his works. Pleasing to him be my theme. I will be glad in the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. And when, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Earlier this morning, a, uh, a thought uh, occurred to me as I was getting ready to... Uh, to, to preach the 8 o'clock Mass. So over the, the last year, 
many men from both St. Joseph and St. Mary Parishes have been participating in a program on Saturday mornings, early Saturday mornings, called That Man Is You. Over the last several weeks, that program had finished up uh, just shortly after Easter, and so they began a, um, a different program over the summer months here in preparation for Easter, for uh, Pentecost. It's a program entitled The Wild Goose. And it's entitled The Wild Goose in reference to the Holy Spirit. Because, well, we typically associate the Holy Spirit with a dove, right? As we heard in uh, one of the gospel passages of the, uh, the baptism of our Lord, the Holy Spirit appeared as a dove over our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, you know, the Holy Spirit being referred to as the Holy Goose or the, the wild goose. Well, the thought occurred to me because I was uh, walking past an area here on the grounds right outside the garage of the, uh, the rectory where we had not a wild goose, but a wild duck who had nested over the, uh, the last several weeks. About Easter is when she, uh, is when she nested, laid about uh, a dozen and a half eggs. And Father Thomas vigilantly every day was going to check on Mother Duck to see how things were going. I kept telling him as he would anxiously say, oh, when the eggs hatch, I'm going to catch some of the ducklings and we'll, we'll keep them here in the garden area next to the rectory. I said, good luck, Father. As the weeks went on and there were no ducklings, I started saying to Father, there's likely no ducklings. Well, for the first time in many, well, maybe my whole life, I'm going to admit something. I'm going to admit I was wrong. <laughs> Wednesday, in preparation for the great feast of Pentecost, Mama Duck hatched her ducklings and then flew the coop. She's gone. She took them all down to the river to, you know, to, uh, to get away from Father Thomas. I think she had a suspicion. <laughs> Well, as we celebrate this great feast of, uh, of Pentecost, which is the culminating feast of the Easter season, we heard in the gospel passage, actually a familiar gospel passage. It was the one that was proclaimed on the Sunday after Easter, the octave of Easter, Divine Mercy Sunday. It's from the very night of the resurrection it's a reminder to us of the deep connection of our Lord's rising from the dead and of his pouring forth of the Holy Spirit. On that Divine Mercy Sunday, I had the great privilege of confirming our eighth graders here in the parish because of, uh, uh, because of a, an emergency. Monsignor Oxley wasn't able to be present, so I had that great privilege of confirming our eighth graders and of reflecting on this gospel passage at their confirmation. As our Lord poured forth the Holy Spirit, he had said to the apostles, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And then he breathed on them the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit is poured out on us this day in a renewing fashion for mission to send us forth, just as he was sent forth by the Father. Now, why is it that we are being sent forth, and why is the Holy Spirit being poured out in a renewing way on us today? Well, for the benefit of the church. That's the mission. The Father has sent the Son, and the Son is sending us to go forth and to build up the body of Christ that is the church. And so the Spirit is poured upon us with his many gifts, specifically for that purpose. St. Paul, in speaking to the Corinthians, reminds them, he says, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. Did you hear that? The Spirit is poured out and produces in everyone. In every individual, 
The Spirit's gifts are given for some benefit. Now, we're familiar with the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. I make the eighth graders memorize them, and then I quiz them. I think we've got at least one of our eighth graders, or former eighth graders, now that school is done, you know, who was uh, confirmed earlier. And I know we have a couple of our high school students who've been confirmed. Wonder how many of them still remember those seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Don't worry, I'm not going to quiz you now. But here's what they are. Right? Wisdom, understanding, knowledge, right judgment or counsel, fortitude or strength, piety or love, fear of the Lord. These sevenfold gifts are first given to each and to every one of us. Each individual has, been, has received these gifts in our baptism. And then they're brought to perfection in the sacrament of confirmation. And they are continuously renewed as we live out the life of the Spirit. The reason those gifts specifically are given at baptism and renewed and, and perfected in confirmation is so that we might live out the Christian life. These are the gifts that God gives us specifically for our own sanctification so that we may, might build up ourself as the body of Christ. So those seven gifts, they're given to us so that we might be holy ourselves as individuals. But St. Paul points out that there are many gifts beyond these seven that are spoken of initially by the prophet Isaiah, that are beyond the initial outpouring of the Holy Spirit in baptism and confirmation, but that there are many forms there are different kinds, and all of them, these different workings, are given to, some, to each individual for the manifestation of the Spirit to some benefit to build up the body of Christ the church. He speaks of them a little bit here, but also in the Romans and Ephesians. And what those gifts are, they manifest themselves first as you know, gifts that can be described as for power or for um, you know, the, the different exhortations. In the, in the uh, motivational gifts that he speaks of in Romans, there are these, the gift of prophecy, which is not necessarily like being a prophet, speaking you know, on behalf of God, but rather one who perceives the workings of God going on in the lives of others and can help point that out where individuals might need to be reminded that God is at work. There's the gift of, of ministry. Those are the individuals who do, right? Who go out and they, they get things done, right? They serve others in love. There's the gift of, of teaching, right? To be able to explain the truths of God and to help others understand them and to live them out. There's the gift of exhortation, right? To build up and to encourage others to persevere in the life of faith. There's the gift of uh, contribution, St. Paul says, or you know, almsgiving, those who, who give, right? These are the ones who give of themselves in time, talent, or treasure, you might say, to make sure that what needs to get done does get done. Now, for all of those who give of themselves to get things done, there's always one who needs to administer, right? To, to lead and to make sure that what needs to be done is getting done, right? And to guide, those are the administrators. And then there's those who show some mercy, right? Those who have compassion on others. These are just a small example of the many gifts that Paul goes on to enumerate. And he speaks in another place of, you know, those who are equipped to provide for the holy ones, right? Such as apostles and prophets and teachers, so there are many gifts that the Holy Spirit pours out for the benefit of the church. And when we speak of the benefit of the church, we're not just simply speaking of, okay, the parish. Because that's, that's obviously where we experience church most readily, most frequently. We're talking of maybe the wider area, right? Our, our city with multiple parishes, of the diocese, but also the universal church. But let's not forget 
the domestic church, the family. Even as the parish is perhaps the place where we experience church most you know, readily, where we should be living it out most fully is in the family, the domestic church. So as we hear St. Paul remind us that God our Father pours out the gifts of the Spirit, so many numerous gifts, all for the benefit of the church to each individual, so that we might build up his body, the church, begs the question this morning, do we know the gifts, the charisms that the Father has poured out upon us, each individually, for the building up of the church, for the building up of the family, for the building up of the parish, building up of the, of the wider area of the church, for the building up of the universal church. Do we know the specific charism, gift that God has given to us? And do we live it out? Do we put it into practice? And so maybe an encouragement this week to pray and to ask the Father to reveal to you, Father, what is the gift that you have given to me specifically? for the building up of the body of Christ that is the church. Whether that's in the home right now or within the parish or beyond. And then ask, am I living this gift out fully right now? Or how might I be able to put it into ever greater practice? In this way, truly, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each individual a gift for the building up of the body of Christ. May we know that gift and live that gift ourselves to the greater glory of God who has poured out upon us his spirit today and every day. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Made strong in faith by the Holy Spirit, we have confidence to present our needs before the Father. For Pope Francis, Bishop Thomas, and all clergy, that they may be enriched by the gifts of the Spirit and lead us to a more faithful living of the gospel, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, that their actions may bear the fruit of peace and foster justice throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the health and safety of military personnel, first responders, and all who stand in harm's way to protect and defend the lives of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For blessings on our graduates, that they may always recognize the hand of God in all of their gifts and accomplishments, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and the suffering, that the breath of the Spirit's love may come upon them, restoring them to health, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our faithful departed, including Lois Steiger, and for all who have died in service to our nation, for our own needs and intentions we bring to this Mass, especially for Ron and Sue Walters, Luke Kern, Ruth Odu, the Falter Gerber families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, grant us the continuous help of your Spirit as you answer our prayers and fill our lives with his gifts for the gifts of grace for the building up of the body of Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The preparation hymn number 424, One Spirit, One Church, number 424. Still burning through the ages, 
still present in our Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of his. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mysteries of the sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion. You bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy.
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of Pentecost, on which the Holy Spirit appeared to the apostles in tongues of fire and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks. He said that the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. This bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving pa of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, 
a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not away in our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord to whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. with the Holy Spirit and spoke of the marvels of God. Alleluia. Have number 348, Spirit and Grace, number 348. Yes. 
as our lives whose presence we bear. The whole Spirit make your grace revealed in this holy meal. Spirit of God, sending us forth, we spread your wisdom throughout all the earth. Gather the nations and form us in Christ. Come be the presence in our life. In the breathless, broken and shared, Christ is our life. Whose presence we bear, come, O Spirit, make your grace revealed in this holy Let us pray. O oh God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. This week should be the last week that uh, contractors are here installing the altar. So uh, Tuesday should be the last time that we are not having Eucharistic adoration as typically scheduled. Uh, that should resume that first Tuesday of June, just in time for us to celebrate the Feast of Corpus Christi uh, on the 11th of June. The front of the bulletin has information about our Corpus Christi uh, devotions that will be happening this year, uh, namely that in between the Masses on Sunday morning, we'll have periods of Eucharistic adoration going on. So as you come in for this Mass, our Lord will be exposed on the altar so that we can uh, take some time ourselves before and after the Mass to be in our Lord's presence. And then the annual procession will occur after the 12 o'clock noon Mass on the 11th. Tomorrow, uh, Memorial Day, happy Memorial Day, everybody, and to all of our uh, veterans as well. Uh, tomorrow, the, the annual Memorial Day Mass, which is celebrated in the cemetery, will be celebrated this year at 8.30. Typically, it's been 9 a.m. A few individuals uh, have recently, you know, last year said to me, you know, Father, uh, with a 9 o'clock start, we can't really get to the parade. If we want to go to the parade or if we're required to be at the parade, we can't come to Mass. So we're going to try 8.30. Should be able to allow everybody to do both, that desire to do both. And hopefully allow me to get home with some bit of ease because I always get caught, uh, you know, on the other side of town because of uh, the parade coming up the main street. So tomorrow, 8.30, bring a chair and or a blanket as uh, you come out to that wonderful uh, celebration. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, the Father of lights, who was pleased to enlighten the disciples' minds by the outpouring of the Spirit, the paraclete, grant you gladness by his blessing and make you always abound with the gifts of the same Spirit. Amen. May the wondrous flame that appeared above the disciples powerfully cleanse your hearts from every evil and pervade them with its purifying light. Amen. And may God, who has been pleased to unite many tongues in the profession of one faith, give you perseverance in that same faith. And by believing, may you journey from hope to clear vision. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Recessional hymn number 393, The Spirit Sends Us Forth, 393. Spirit sends us for to serve. We go in Jesus' name to bring the tidings to the poor. God's favor to proclaim. We go to conquer those who mourn and set the burden free. Where hope is dim to share a dream. Cảm ơn các bạn đã xem video. Nếu thấy hay, hãy nhấn like, đăng ký kênh và comment để ủng hộ chúng mình nhé.